We're looking at Ken Griffin's efforts to build a 62-story office tower on Park Avenue. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Natalie Wong, who has reported on this story. How did the news come out today? Who was Ken Griffin really presenting this plan to? Right, so this plan has been floated for the past two years now. Today's announcement, which was announced at a power breakfast with Mayor Eric Adams in a Park Avenue, Avenue historic landmark building, really shows that it's moving forward. They filed plans officially with the city, and it'll be Ken Griffin's personal investment into building one of the tallest new skysc skyscrapers that'll be in Midtown Manhattan alongside Vornado and Rudin, two major developers in the city. And this will be for Citadel and Citadel Securities, the market making firm. Now, what's interesting about this in terms of Citadel, Ken Griffin's own commitment to New York City? We know he's focused a lot on Miami, even London in recent years. He's kind of moved away from Chicago in a lot of ways. So what does New York mean in the scope of Citadel and Ken Griffin's larger empire. Right. It's a major commitment on Ken Griffin's part to remaining in New York City. I mean, think about the scope of this building. It's 1.8 million square feet. It's even bigger than what they had initially proposed two years ago because they bought air rights from nearby St. Bartholomew's Church and St. Patrick's Cathedral so that they can build even taller. And what's surprising about this is that just two years ago, the current offices that they're at 425 Park Avenue had just opened and it's already not enough space for Citadel and so they're planning a much bigger building where they're going to be taking up at least a minimum of double the amount of space that they currently have at their offices at 425 Park Avenue. Now, what does it mean to have an office tower this large being built in New York City where there are already worries about vacancies in the city? There's an incredible amount of vacant space in the city, but it really has been a tale of two markets. Uh, for the higher end, newly renovated, newly developed buildings, you see a lot of movement and high rents. And people want to be in those buildings with amenities like pickleball courts, like golf simulators, like restaurants. And then it's a big contrast to nearby Third Avenue where there's a lot of empty buildings and those owners are going to have to struggle to figure out how to attract tenants. What happens to these offices as new offices are being added to the market? When you cover the, the lending landscape and the investing landscape here, are these kind of left for dead? You know, I think a lot of developers and the city are going to have to rethink how to repurpose some of these buildings. There's been a lot of talks about conversions. Unfortunately, not all the buildings are conducive to conversions. Um, in many ways, you know, it might be a slow process of renovating. Once these big skyscrapers that are newly built are leased up. Maybe that'll lead to more demand for the B buildings, the smaller buildings where, you know, maybe not the top finance companies can afford to pay the high rents for.